Yes, sir. Tamil Selvan, sir, please you can proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, Megavar, sir, MOC team. Yes, sir. Oh, we proceed, Ma. Ah, okay, sir. Good evening to all and all present here. Sometimes challenges and struggles are exactly we need in our lives. May you welcome every effort, every struggle, and every challenge. May you open your wings and fly. It gives me immense pressure to welcome you all to this special event. We are truly honored by your presence today, and we are thrilled to have you share this momentous occasion with us. I would like to extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to our distinguished guest. I would like to welcome our chairman, sir, Mr. R. Srinivasan, in his absence. I would like to welcome our Vice Chairman, Mr. S. Searching, in his absence. I would like to welcome our Principal, Sir Dr. N. Karthikeyan, and our CSO, Sir Dr. S. Balusami, to this event. Welcome you, sir. Thanks. Now, I would like to welcome our today's Chief Guest, Sri Vivekanandan Kamraj, sir, to this occasion. Welcome you, sir. I also welcome our department heads and faculty members and all the heads of other departments, faculty members, and all my dear friends to this auspicious occasion. We are all privileged to have our today's chief guest among us today, and we thank you for taking time out of busy schedules to extend your support. Your esteemed presence has indeed glorified the event and added a vibrancy to this gathering. Now I welcome Shalini Sundaran to introduce our chief guest for the day. Our guest, Mr. Vivekan, sir, is the founder and CEO of Android Biomed Private Limited. He started company Android Biomed and pretend a novel method for utilizing agrovestra mature coconut water from Copra processing yard to produce a wound dressing for healing chronic conditions such as diabetic foot ulcer, bands, bed sores, pressure ulcer, etc. This is the first of this kind of product in Asia specific region. In innovative wound dressing is incorporated with coconut derived lauric acid, which has been scientifically proven to have anti microbial and skin healing properties through, through his research work. This product has been currently commercialized with the brand name Coco Hill and being used by major hospital chain across the country with excellent research. And his such is like his work has been recognized by the Indian government and he have been granted about 1.20 crore rupees for his research work. For his achievement in converting agro waste to high value society relevant product, we were recognized by the Honorable President of India, Srimad Raghupati Marmuji, at Bharat Mandabam, New Delhi, in November 2023. Thank you, Shalini, for the brief introduction. Now, now the section is yours, sir. Okay, uh, very good evening to all. Uh, so, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Baluswami, sir, for giving me this wonderful opportunity and also the management at KSR uh, College uh, for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to give a lecture to students like your uh, management students like yourself. So the, today the topic is about innovation and entrepreneurship. So I think uh, most of us will know what uh, innovation and entrepreneurship is. But uh, there, is all, there is never um, a place where you can learn about these topics to the full. You know, it's always a learning matter. It is uh, always there is something to, to something to learn about uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. So again, today I'm going to talk to you about these two uh, aspects uh, with some, uh, with giving you some examples on how people have uh, utilized innovation and uh, exemplified their uh, entrepreneurship skills. So that you can also, you know, uh, derive from uh, these uh, uh, um, examples. Okay, what is innovation? So that you can explain it in several ways. So simply say, uh, speaking, innovation is making something new and useful. It should be useful to the society or to, to the someone that is uh, going to use the innovation. And uh, it need not be a groundbreaking uh, uh, event. Innovation doesn't mean that it is totally groundbreaking, it is totally new, not, nobody has done something. It can be a, a, a marginal improvement in something, which, has, which helps the customers, end users, society to do something that they are already doing. So uh, there is also some people will say innovation is also a, a creativity, but there is a difference in creativity and innovation. Creativity is required, but innovation is uh, something which is ultimately leads to, uh, leads to some useful product. Okay, let's say uh, take the example of uh, Dolly Chaiwala. I think everyone will know him. He is very famous now, uh, at least in the Asian countries, he's become uh, very famous. So what was he doing? He was just a tea seller. Every street in India you go, there will be at least two to three uh, tea sellers. But what did he do to make a change? He created a theme for himself. 
he became uh, uh, like a, you know he created an attire for himself such that uh, people started noticing him because anyone going uh, down the road will not uh, specifically notice any uh, tea shop specifically but he created a situation where he was being noticed so this is this we can call it as creativity he he was creative he created a, a, a personality such that he was being noticed he utilized this personality of his to uh, uh, to make some innovation let's say he mean uh, he utilized this uh, personality to uh, attract people and created a uh, uh, chai selling so that is how we can say he is innovative so he was creative he used the creativity to be innovative in the now again webinar yes is anyone having any questions Sir, please proceed sir. okay okay oh fine 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 yeah if you can uh, be on mute or you can uh, even stop me any time uh, if you have any questions not any have any question yes yes for that start man the question is yeah yeah okay uh, so next so uh, so how, how do you classify innovation innovation can be sustaining innovation or disruptive innovation Uh, what do, what do you mean by sustaining something that uh, we do uh, every day and we are doing a marginal improvement uh, for example let's take a iphone so iphone when it came into the market first time it we can call it disruptive but since uh, then uh, for the last few years iphone has been coming out with the new, new versions they are like, they are saying iphone 11 12 13 now now we are in iphone 16 so what uh, difference uh, uh, ways they have given some very small differences but even for that small difference people are uh, uh, ditching the old iphone and going for the new so if you go to uh, some big cities for example uh, recently i was in uh, singapore last uh, about a month back so over there 16 i think you will know that iphone 16 was launched recently so every mall and every shop wherever iphone is sold or even in the iphone store people are rushing uh, like in uh, like uh, you know they're going to some uh, uh, big uh, mega event uh, offer is happening or something like that and they are buying iphone an iphone they never sell on sale or nothing like that happens but imagine the previous iphone to this iphone there is very marginal difference but still people are uh, li- lining up in these stores to buy this kind of product so this is called sustaining innovation so the, they are just coming out of the new version Uh, so that uh, there is a demand uh, from the people and they also can sustain the market the next important thing which i see as real innovation is called disruptive innovation uh, so many of you students uh, you might i am not sure if you would have seen a pager so pager in india specifically had a very short uh, life span maybe you might have heard pager the news of uh, in uh, lebanon recently in lebanon uh, israel uh, created a plan where they sold pagers to uh, uh, lebanese people Uh, through some uh, third uh, party and then finally uh, they, uh, the uh, army in israel detonated these uh, pagers and it became a very big news through globally so uh, pagers in india maybe around 20 years back 20 25 years back uh, they they were present in india um, and it was a very short time maybe we can say pagers life lifespan in india was only around 5 years after that suddenly there was this concept called cell phone and within a no time Uh, you uh, the pages is totally out of the market so this is all, this is called disruptive innovation something in uh, new has come in such that the entire uh, uh, competition there is no competition at all or the entire competition is totally killed okay now uh, these are the different classifications we can classify as uh, uh, for innovation so how do you be how are you uh, being innovative how to be innovative or where to find the sources for innovative innovativeness so they always say uh, there's a saying called uh, necessity is the mother of all in- inventions so any new product or new invention happens because there is need that there is need for it by someone or somebody in the market or the society as a whole so like this you can classify into different uh, instances where uh, which leads to innovation so the 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 first thing that someone can say, say is unexpected occurrences so suddenly some kind of idea comes to someone Uh, and then uh, something develops out of the idea that becomes uh, innovation so for let's i i want to give uh, my example uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, this one uh, so uh, you know like the there are different kind of wounds the wound uh, happening in the market like diabetic foot ulcers burns pressures then there are surgical wounds so usually surgical wounds uh, there are uh, general wound dressing is more than enough just like cotton gauze or like that but when you go for uh, when you see conditions such as diabetic foot ulcers burns 
or uh, uh, pressure ulcers, bed sores. For this, they, they classify it as uh, um, chronic ulcer or chronic wound. So already there are several products for this kind of chronic ulcer in the market. Uh, mostly they are imported. These chronic ulcer uh, wound dressings are mostly imported from uh, Western countries and they are very expensive. Okay, so I, I am in the, my background is in the coconut industry. We have been into the coconut industry for the last 40 years. My family has been into this field. We are doing a lot of uh, products out of coconut. So for this coconut industry, I used to travel a lot. Uh, um, so I, I went to one um, uh, expo that was happening in uh, Malaysia, specifically for coconut. And then uh, there I came to know that, the, you know, one company is uh, tying up on some, with some German company to uh, uh, develop a new wound care product. Okay, so meanwhile, what is happening, if, uh, if you, many of you uh, would have seen the coconut industry, uh, in the coconut, uh, how they are making copra. So copra is a product that is uh, being uh, uh, used to do extract oil, coconut oil. Okay, so the matured coconut, they have to break it on a copra yard, then they, they let all the coconut water go to waste, then the copra is uh, dried and then the shell is removed from the copra and then it goes for oil milling. So what happens to this matured coconut water? If anyone has seen, almost uh, all the coconut water that is produced from the copra yards are going to waste. Uh, for what we have estimated is almost uh, 20 crore liter, 20 crore liter of this coconut water goes to waste without any value addition uh, to this product. So, so much waste is, has been happening uh, throughout uh, Tamil Nadu, at least for for, for the, all the, for so many years that I know of. So, this waste has been in my mind uh, for several years. Even we have a coconut processing plant, desiccated coconut plant. In this plant also, we process coconut for making desiccated coconut powder. So, when we break this matured coconut, all the coconut water is wasted. It is not great, uh, being utilized for anything. And the problem with this coconut water, it is very perishable. That is, it will spoil immediately. So it is going to the drain or gutter and then it creates uh, unsustainable environment around that uh, area. So, so many problems with them. Okay, so I've been thinking about uh, what to do with this product for many uh, years, but nothing was actually done. So then one day I was in this uh, expo happening in Malaysia. And then I came to know that uh, they are... The one company is utilizing this coconut water. They are tying up with one uh, company in Germany and they are coming out with a new, new wound care product. So I was not very keen on that because this, uh, it, seemed, it seemed to be a very complicated technology and uh, wound care was not, I, I was not exposed to that domain at all. A medical uh, product out of uh, this coconut. So the, I just left it. So two to three years down the line after that uh, incident, I was again traveling to one country called, uh, to uh, one EVA expo, expo called uh, Medica Expo that is uh, happening in uh, Germany. Though so this is a very specific medical expo. Actually, I have another company called Medicaid Implants where we make uh, patient specific implants. So for that industry business, I was traveling to this Germany. So what happened that that, that expo is very huge. Uh, you can say it is a size of almost uh, 20 times of Codicia Expo. You might have gone to Codicia Hall. Uh, you might have gone to Agri Expo over there. So it is at least 20 times bigger than that. So that kind of expo, and I was traveling, was visiting all the stalls. Then at one fine uh, moment, I was having a severe leg pain. So I thought I'll go sit in one corner. So usually in this expo, uh, these kind of uh, technical expos, there'll, there'll be some... Um, conferences uh, or talks happening, talk shows happening in, uh, in some corners, you know, some doctors will come and they'll talk about the latest technologies like that. So what happened, uh, because uh, my leg was paining, I went inside one of those conferences just to rest, you know, because usually they don't have seats or chairs anywhere. So I went into this conference area where a lot of chairs were there and I was sitting there. So at that point, uh, one doctor was talking about uh, this, uh, this one product called biocellulose. And then they say this biocellulose is very good for wound healing and uh, they have done some R&D on that. Uh, preliminary work has been do, uh, been, uh, do, uh, carrying out, carried out at some uh, research uh, university in uh, Germany. So that all that moment also, I never, uh, this concept never stuck with me, this idea to develop this uh, wound care product. But then I, when I came back to India, one of my close relatives, they were suffering from uh, this uh, diabetic foot ulcer and they had to amputate the feet. So that is when this, suddenly this spark came to me. Because in uh, Malaysia, several years back, I got an idea of, about utilizing this waste coconut water to uh, produce, uh, to work out on medical product. Then after two years after that, I'm uh, hearing, listening to something, uh, they are saying that they are utilizing this biocellulose and they are producing a wound care product. Then I realized, why not we do that and uh, we develop such kind of a product? 
all uh, end of the day this product is going to waste this mature coconut water is going to waste why not we develop this kind of medical product and then almost 5 years back that is just before covid time uh, i was i started uh, seriously thinking about this uh, project and then we started research work uh, uh, on developing this product uh, so it's almost 4 years now we uh, were into r and d we spent a lot of money then we applied for government grants so lot of uh, setbacks we had to face but ultimately uh, four years of persistence and uh, hard work we were able to make this product a reality for the first time in asia pacific region this kind of uh, product we were able to develop and now the product is also market uh, is uh, commercialized so why i'm saying this because uh, all your travels or experiences you will come across so many other things uh, which may not be immediately related to or relatable but when you are able to uh, uh, take that idea into your mind and keep it somewhere in some corner at some point a spark will come to you so that is what we call as unexpected occurrences when which will lead to innovation then the, there is other concept called incongruity uh, let's say uh, something had to be in a, some some particular way but it is in a different way for example uh, there has been the, some debates was happening in the automobile industry uh, in th- with three wheels uh, we can very well uh, have a uh, st- stable trans- uh, transport right we have been we have traveled in uh, auto, uh, auto rickshaws so it's uh, running on three wheels and it is a uh, very efficient and we can still have stable uh, transport but still we are having four wheelers so for a, one example to uh, to this uh, incongruity concept Uh, let's take software now we are we are we've all been using microsoft office so earlier microsoft office used to be a stand alone software that had to be installed on your laptop or desktop wherever you are using so it uh, so every system if you want to utilize microsoft office it has to be installed on that but now of late the concept among softwares is such that it is called software as a service or saas so what happens in so- software as a service everything is gone into cloud so even your microsoft office now office 360 is there that is in on cloud you can access the same account from multiple uh, systems whichever systems you access you can just uh, log in uh, and uh, with the internet you can log in and then use you place that all your documents will be in the same place so you don't have to worry about copying the documents on a pen drive and taking to a different uh, laptop or system whatever so this is how a software was supposed to be because the multi uh, uh, device portability concept is there uh, even if you are traveling you don't have to carry your laptop and all the big uh, data with you so this is how software is supposed to be but earlier the software was always on a system and it was very difficult but now it we have got the liberty of uh, utilizing it in multiple uh, locations so this is called incongruity then process needs Uh, so there is a need for uh, uh, some innovation to happen such that uh, the the product the product or the whatever it is will sustain so anyone um, everyone must have uh, heard about uh, the assembly line right so if you are from the engineering background you will know what assembly line is assembly line is uh, where the pro- the uh, product that is being manufactured moves and the people uh, who are making that product uh, stays in a sta- stationary position so before this concept came into play everything was happening um, uh, in a, you know the product every product was made once it uh, fully and then the next product will be made but ford introduced this concept called uh, assembly line after this concept was introduced the cost of production uh, came down very drastically and this concept which was, which was initially utilized in uh, automobile industry now it has gone uh, it has been utilized in all uh, uh, manufacturing this is the standard way of manufacturing now so industry and market changes are another uh, area which will demand uh, innovativeness so let's say uh, the uh, electric cars so uh, everyone will know uh, tesla uh, tesla is the f- one of the first electric cars uh, to be in the market but many of you should understand that the first automobile that came into market was electric even before gasoline uh, or uh, gas powered or uh, the fuel powered engines came into play the first auto- automobile was electric powered so even then we had electri- electrical vehicles but ultimately uh, the demand for people at that point was uh, different the storage technology was not developed at that point uh, also you know the the range and all that would have been issue that's why the gasoline caught up with the market but now we are slowly seeing that uh, auto- the electric cars are taking over 
Uh, why, why primarily? Because uh, uh, there is uh, emission issues, there is pollution problems. The many countries have come out with policies uh, such that uh, the, uh, they are, uh, the, in the future they should be running only on electricity. So like that, industry and market changes demands innovativeness. So demographic change. Demographic change is also one reason, reason where uh, which leads to innovation. Okay, now there are several uh, bikes in the market. Uh, maybe 20, 30 years back, if you see, uh, most of the bikes will be only one model. There may be this uh, CD100 or uh, Yamaha uh, uh, 150 like that. So all the, model, the bikes were very monotonous. There was no uh, specific bikes that would cater to different segments. But now if you see, there are different, uh, bike itself is classified into different uh, segments, mostly into demographic, uh, uh, class, uh, by, classified on demographics. For example, if you if you take uh, KTM bike, not all people will buy KTM bike. Only these youngsters uh, uh, who are maybe the in the academics or you know youngsters youngsters prefer KTM bike. Whereas if you go for bikes like uh, heavier bikes like uh, bullets or uh, thunderbolts like that, people more working class people, people who are the 30s or later prefer that kind of uh, uh, product. So the um, KTM found a niche and then they found that there is demand for this kind of a product in that niche and then they were introduced the product. So demographics also plays a role in for innovation. Then change in uh, perception. So perception uh, as, the, as we, uh, you know, the, uh, we go on in our lives, uh, the, our perception changes. For example, let's uh, take around uh, 30, 40 years back, everybody, they will consume information through print media. Uh, the uh, media of uh, TV, TV or the visual media or the uh, internet media was not there. Every information would have been got uh, taken through print media. But now uh, the media is all uh, now that information, everything is being changed to uh, taken over by uh, digital media. Now we have uh, online news channels and the online YouTube channels where most of the people consume information and uh, these uh, uh, traditional modes are being uh, is dying slowly even this print media like paper and all the subscription is going down drastically uh, of recently there was one uh, very famous company uh, in the, it's in the west in the west maybe i think in the us which they closed down their print media totally so it was more than 150 year old company and they closed down the print media very recently so this says that uh, the, the concept of uh, news consumption changes a new technology also, you know, when people come out with a new technology, again, innovation is happening. Uh, you, you might have heard about a machine called fax machine. So earlier, any official communication uh, that is happening through, uh, through to, to, between companies or between officials or governments, it always used to happen through fax, fax machines. But now, again, that product has become obsolete. There is no concept called fax. Everything is email. So now we have seen about all the different concepts and uh, the sources where innovation is being uh, uh, generated. Now, what is an entrepreneur? We'll come to the concept of entrepreneur. So entrepreneur is, again, uh, I don't have to tell you anything. Uh, entrepreneur is basically a businessman, but not all businessmen can be uh, called an entrepreneur. The main focus of a businessman is to create value. So value means not only monetary value. So many people say business is for making money. But for to an entrepreneur, business is to create value. Money is just the byproduct. Money is not everything. Money is just a byproduct. So the primarily uh, entrepreneur wants to make a change to his immediate society. He wants to change the environment he is living in and the people uh, that uh, change to the people around him. Uh, so, uh, he also is a risk taker uh, because uh, uh, when you enter into entrepreneurship, nothing is uh, uh, planned. Nothing is uh, straightforward. Obviously, risk is a very uh, important part and parcel of being an entrepreneur. They, they, they said to uh, uh, meet unmet market demands and create overall development in the field they are engaged in. So, you, uh, entrepreneur is very different from a businessman, uh, although business is a part of being an entrepreneur. So, what is required uh, from an entrepreneur? Uh, so, one of the main things that I would say uh, is passion. Uh, so uh, let's take again for example on uh, for this uh, point. Uh, if you take the case of Baijus, so you know you might have known how it started out. So Baijus was uh, just a simple uh, uh, teacher and he was taking his uh, tuition classes uh, uh, in uh, through a normal mode. Then he saw that many people were coming to him uh, for because his way of teaching was very good. Many people were coming to him, so he wanted to expand uh, his uh, passion. 
so he he went on uh, uh, online social media then finally he f- found the b- g- company and then uh, we all know what is the situation of byju's now that, that only happened because they moved away from their core and the, the passion the passion was lost and became more money minded the company had to take a beating so that is why passion is very important to sustain and improve a business then next comes determination so no matter what uh, situation you are in you have to be very determined on what you are set out to do for example let's take uh, elon musk he uh, around uh, 20 20 years back uh, tesla was a new company it was newly founded and at that point there was no company called uh, spacex i think everybody will now know about tesla and spacex i don't have to explain about what they are doing but imagine uh, 20 years back uh, he just started tesla uh because he got the money he was the founder one of the founder of uh, paypal and then he sold that company he earned a few millions and then immediately he wanted to uh, go uh, follow his dream hello sir sir hello Yes. so uh, so even before he uh, he was uh, doing very well in automotive industry his ultimate goal was to populate mars imagine that at that point anyone uh, listening to him would have thought he is a fool because uh, in around 2013 his, his company almost went uh, bankrupt uh, tesla uh, they were uh, at that point they were supposed to deliver around 2000 uh, cars of their roadster but they had uh, they had only around 30 cars in pro- pro- produced and they were uh, sh- uh, falling short of so many orders and uh, he just had one week's money left before uh, some he, he was able to find some investor again to uh, uh, run the company so imagine even at that point he didn't leave the, the leave his thought of uh, uh, starting spacex but now i think you had, uh, might have seen uh, recent uh, la- about la- last week he created technology to capture the uh, uh, boosters in mid air no no one would have even thought about this one imagine nasa being one of the oldest space uh, companies and the biggest space company it seems nasa takes around uh, uh, 2 billion us dollars to uh, run one uh, space uh, uh, you know rocket to launch one rocket but now tesla is able to or sorry spacex is able to do that at just 65 million dollars so imagine the amount of value he has created and the, the his determination uh, so he is able to do that and this is just uh, one among the, so many other things that he is going to accomplish so now recently he has come out with a statement saying that by 2030 he will have a colony in mars can anyone imagine in just maybe uh, how many more years in uh, 15 16 odd years uh, anyone uh, nobody can imagine having a, a colony in mars but he is saying he can do that and this track record says he, this guy will achieve whatever uh, he is uh, is determined to do so that is how an uh, entrepreneur should be determined on what he wants to do next important concept is self discipline usually entrepreneurship can be uh, many people uh, from the outside when they see they, they may think entrepreneurship is very uh, it's a uh, you know it's very classy and it's very cool thing to be but believe me being entrepreneur is very mundane most of the time because uh, when you especially when you are starting up you have to do each and every work that the company that you are required to do uh, staying in uh, you know in compliant with all the reg- regulatory procedures Uh, in all the accounting accounting procedures so many things are there which you have to stay up to date because you are also in a position to uh, you know to attract investments so investors when they ask you about finances or so many other things which you may not like uh, but you still you have to be uh, well versed in and uh, up to date with those aspects of the business it can get very monotonous only with self discipline you can uh, you can uh, be uh, consistent with all these things another uh, important feature of, uh, of being a entrepreneur is self awareness so many times most of these uh, innovators if you see they are not all from uh, big in, uh, universities or big degrees there are many people uh, innovators and entrepreneurs who didn't go have a degree at all 
let, let's not take the case of Elon Musk or uh, Facebook Mark Zuckerberg because they were very bright and they were studying in Stanford and one of the biggest colleges, but they dropped out. But if you see many cases, uh, the, the, they would not have had uh, any degree at all. But still, uh, they were able to self-assess uh, themselves. They know what area they were strong in. So uh, they used that strength as leverage to carry out the business. Whereas they also understood what their weaknesses were and they were able to hone their skills in that weakness. This is very important because uh, you, as an entrepreneur, you cannot say that, you know, I'm, I'm weak in this, I cannot do that one. You have to, uh, whatever uh, the aspect that is, you have to take care of that and you have to, uh, you know, uh, build your skills in that one. For example, some people may be very shy. They may say, sir, I'm not a people's person. I can't, I cannot speak in stage. But you cannot be like that. As an entrepreneur, you have to present, you are the face of the company. So you have to uh, present uh, what you're doing, what your company is doing uh, the, in the best possible way. Because you may, uh, for example, if you're pitching to an in investor, you get a very short time. You know, most of these uh, investors take decision about a company only in a matter of four minutes. They give you only four minutes. And in this four minutes, you have to, convince them to invest their hard-earned money in your company. So imagine how good of a communicating uh, communication skills you should have. So like that in all aspects, the uh, uh, you know, entrepreneur should be self-aware and they should take the appropriate uh, uh, actions and uh, steps that is required. Curiosity. An entrepreneur should be very curious because uh, as I told you, my journey, I have been exposed to so many industries right now. Uh, initially, as I told you, my family was in the coconut industry, so I know in and out of uh, what the coconut industry is about. Then uh, I went for my studies outside the country over there. I used to work as a tutor. I used to work in a catering uh, department. I used to work in a gas uh, convenience store. So all these were all opportunities for me. Uh, it was all learning aspect for me. Uh, I could have very well, uh, you know, got money from my uh, parents and uh, lived a luxurious life. But I got the opportunity to explore the, these kind of opportunities, where which would have not have been possible if I were still in India. Because in India, I mean, there are so many factors uh, that uh, prevents you from doing all this. But when you travel and you experience so many different things, you get to learn, know the world so much. And this will be uh, very uh, useful to you at some point. You will never know when it is uh, useful to you. But um, take my word, any and every experience for you is uh, useful. Uh, so I always uh, tell uh, people, I, you know, when I give a talk, always be available uh, at whatever uh, event it is or whatever situation it is or, uh, you know, whatever is happening around you, be aware so that you will know at some point in time it may be, it will be useful for you. So be also curious because not, be, let's say you are, uh, you are, a, you know, you are in the management uh, field and uh, some technical uh, information is coming by you. Don't always avoid it. If you want to, uh, if you have the time, do uh, listen to that and just get some information out of that because you'll never know when that information will, will be of help to you. So always stay curious. Also, optimism is a very, very important uh, aspect of uh, being an entrepreneur because entrepreneurship, you can only plan so much because on that journey, uh, most of the time, you will be met with uh, unplanned uh, events or uh, unexpected situations. Uh, you will have to be, uh, you will be faced with technical issues, with financial issues, labor issues, so many uh, government and regulatory issues. At some point, you'll be so low, you will say, you will think about, uh, you know, stopping what you're doing. But never do that. Always stay optim optimistic because you should always think that this is just a, a dull, uh, a rainy day and this will also pass through. Because uh, uh, once you are having that kind of mindset, any kind of uh, situation you can uh, uh, overcome. So passionate, I told you about uh, passion. Uh, decision making. So uh, always being an entrepreneur is about decision making. Every day, every even every minute, you will be taking some decision or the, or the other, uh, which will uh, ultimately lead to your success. So the, you know our uh, national security advisor, Ajit Doval, so he is famously, he has famously quoted a, a line where he says, he'll take the decision and then make sure it is right. So many, many times even I have felt that kind of a situation where you will have to, you will think about uh, one, one uh, some, over something for many, several times and think over and over about it. Uh, ultimately, it lead to a situation where you cannot make any decision. It will drain you emotionally or also, you know, mentally it will drain you. So don't get it caught into that kind of situation. If you, if you are usually, most of the time your gut instinct will say which is right. So believe by that, 
take uh, sometimes go go with your gut uh, instincts on most of the time it will be right even if it's not right you can uh, p- plan to make uh, changes to that and then uh, flexibility and adaptability you should be very flexible uh, when you are an entrepreneur so i'll give you one example of this very good ex- example so i was working in a company called applied materials uh, long back so this what this company apply it's a global company this applied materials they currently they are the world's biggest manufacturer of equipment for making semiconductor chips and also lcd tvs if you see a tvs lc or any lcd for that matter or any chip for that matter would have been made through a, a machine the machinery that was produced by applied materials so just for your information one each semiconductor chip goes through almost 600 to 800 steps of a process it is called you may you'll know that this is a procedure called vlsi but almost 800 uh, procedures and steps are there when uh, when a final uh, semiconductor chip is made okay this company applied materials initially uh, they were they, they were not into equipment they were making uh, this process gas usually for semiconductor industry a uh, lot of uh, chemical gases are required uh, called silene phosphine and like that several gases are required so, uh, semi uh, like uh, Uh, these gases are uh, utilized in the uh, their processes so this company was initially started out with making these process gases and they were selling to uh, the semiconductor industry but uh, what happened one of their cu- customers said we don't have equipment to uh, test out your process gas so you try to come out with the equipment such that we can test out your uh, test the quality of your process uh, of your ga- pro- uh, equipment or product of your process gas so what happened uh, applied materials took the risk it was a big order so uh, they went about and uh, created an equipment in which they will, they can test out their uh, pro- process gas but ultimately they designed that uh, equipment so well that uh, the company is asked uh, applied materials to produce uh, the equipment as well for them so the applied materials were very was very flexible in the, at that point of time that then they changed their business model so uh, just with one customer saying that you know you do this one they could have done but uh, you know just for that customer they could have made that equipment and given and then again stuck to their uh, uh, original business model but uh, they realized uh, their uh, uh, strength in that area and then now finally applied materials the biggest equipment maker they don't do any process uh, items process gas or anything like that so you should be very flexible and adaptable so like that willing to take risk is also a very important part of uh, being an uh, uh, entrepreneur risk is a part and parcel of entrepreneurship and you can only plan so much every entrepreneur they should plan their path they should plan what they have to do uh, immediately and in the short term and the long term but everything will never always go to plan at least 50 if you are uh, if things go to plan at least 50% of the time then i would say you are a very good planner so most of the time uh, things will not go your way but you should be willing to uh, take risk and also not be afraid because failure you should take failure as a lesson and introspect on why what went wrong and never give up because uh, only with the, like you know you think you will know all this uh, this quote where uh, uh, um, thomas edison he was the inventor of light bulb he, he failed a thousand times to come out with the final design for the bulb so every uh, failure was a stepping stone was a learning ex- uh, curve for him and then finally the product was done so failure is uh, not the end of it always uh, you not be don't be afraid to fail and take the risk you will not you the benefit that you reap out of it will be much bigger so again there are so much of aspects that we can keep uh, talking about entrepreneurship and innovation Uh, so what i would uh, ask you uh, students is because you are right now in the college you will be exposed to so many opportunities and learning opportunities especially uh, when you come into the business world or in corporate world the opportunity for learning will be very minimal and you will be required to perform and show your uh, capabilities but when you are in the college i think it's the right time for you to gain new skills and learn and keep learning new things so that it will be very useful for you in the future so again as i told you entrepreneurship is it's an art it is a skill and it is a state of being and uh, uh, the, so today that is all i have for today so if any questions please do uh, ask me i am available now uh, so am i audible yes yes sir you are audible sir yes yeah. yes so uh, so i am i'm finished with my presentation sir so if anyone has okay. any questions i am available to take
thank you very much sir because uh, i know very well about almost you are in a uh, second third generation uh, this much amount of uh, encouragement and uh, curiosity to learn the new things almost you touched all the functional areas of management also and yes, moreover sir. you are hailing from a business family and uh, till now you are having a curiosity you are not much more touching your uh, either even father or uh, traditional members but you are taking your own pathway really and great role model i hope uh, the friends those who are all joined here you are all uh, maybe connected to e road tirchengoda namkal salem when you are coming to pollachi the sakti hotel is the welcoming place in those days many cine stars and they may stay even sakti resort it's an another uh, good initiative uh, i hope now the tourism and the industry is very big in nature and similarly uh, vivek's uh, contribution uh, to the society i am taking this angle uh, business is one great angle and contribution to the society that to uh, for diabetics tamil nadu is in Uh, capital for india so that is the way the diabetic ratio every day is increasing the nature for various reasons but he innovated one new concept for giving a solution for the problem uh, that is the greatness and uh, many congratulations sir definitely you may achieve many more miles you may be the really uh, role model for our young uh, business community and those who are all pursuing under graduation and post graduation in management studies they may look in this experience alone it will give a great tonic for them uh, friends my humble request either from faculty side or student side i hope this is a great opportunity because they created a, a, a great Uh, value additions uh, to the coconut and coconut related products even uh, they manufacturing for uh, virgin coconut tablets and virgin coconut oil and the coconut sugar uh, uh, huge number of products please you can one day visit uh, kamrashar industry also and tender coconut and youtube also many videos are there i hope uh, one uh, reasonably uh, a good personality doing in an bb or mba just you can go through the sakti group they are the real uh, role model for uh, youngsters and entrepreneurs so please you can follow and see that uh, uh, coconut places and whenever you are conducting some expos in our college or our own area also please visit their place and take some products and say showcase you your friends and uh, team members that to majority of uh, girl students and women college you may have a great opportunity even you could take one small idea it will uh, create a great change in your life also uh, any questions please uh, you can uh, discuss with him i hope you are all lucky enough today those who are all joined this event you are lucky enough a great achiever uh, even uh, and uh, the president of india invited and appreciated him uh, they are all really deserving it i know very well about uh, vivek sir and uh, their own friends uh, in young entrepreneur school at pollachi uh, i was also attended and one year continuously a typical business school and international business school how it's functioning similarly they are taking efforts i think uh, sanjay and many Uh, members are there in the tang entrepreneur school even every day also or every week uh, you can invite one personality if possible uh, through directly or through online also they are doing wonderful job uh, to the young community so uh, thank you sir and uh, many yes sir. sir yes sir we have some questions here so earlier yes. uh, there was one question about uh, what emerging trends or technologies do you believe will have the greatest impact on entrepreneurship in the next 5 years so entrepreneurship need not uh, be based on the what is latest trend that is happening it can happen even uh, in a small village it can happen anywhere for example take the case of uh, uh, id you might have known about id fresh right i think most of people will know id fresh you know what they are doing they are doing something which every one of us uh, in our home they we do, we do they are making rice batter what the, what is a big uh, technology or big concept in it is or what is a big uh, uh, you know technology in that it is being done in every house 
but he uh, they thought why why not we do this uh, for the mass mass people and now they are almost several thousand crore uh, company so the, that you can you, you see the innovation he come he came out with the simple packing such that it can be uh, uh, it can have a good, good shelf life and also a supply chain system where it can reach your house so anywhere you want uh, you can think about innovation and especially for india innovation doesn't have to be a big technology oriented what works in india is called frugal technologies technologies which are very easily accessible which are cost effective and which makes our life easy those frugal technologies only work for india for example take the case of uh, coconut leaf what is a what value addition is happening in coconut leaf every product pro, parts of coconut is being a value addition is happening but until, until recently the, the fronds or the they call the frond uh, the leaf no value addition was happening but now one professor in uh, bangalore he has developed a straw biodegradable straw uh, out of coconut leaf it is more uh, firm and sturdy than paper straw paper straw also if you put it in water or drink it will become a soggy but this coconut leaf straw is not soggy at all it has more strength and it is also easy to make so see the innovation so innovation doesn't have to be coming out from big technologies or big companies uh, if you just see the uh, you are if you are very as i told you if you are keeping your eyes really open and you are observing what's happening around your world you will get hundreds of ideas even now i have so many ideas i don't have the time and resources that is uh, what is stopping me to from uh, achieving uh, realizing the all the important ideas that i have so like that if you are staying uh, you are keeping your eyes open and uh, grasping all the information around you surely you can uh, develop very innovative products so how do you identify and assess opportunities for innovation within a particular industry again as i told you you should have passion if you are in a particular industry let's say you are working in a software industry you are a staff employee there you have a passion on uh, to learn more and to observe what is happening in the industry when you have the passion you will go you probably you will read more about that industry through magazines websites you will come out will talk about what the latest technology is there and you surely some ideas will come to you so always have passion about what you're doing without passion you will not survive in any industry or any business uh, okay so how do you stay ahead of the competition in an environment where innovation is rapidly evolving again that your the answer is in your question be innovative that is the only answer because uh, if you want to stay ahead in a competition you should uh, make life easier for uh, whoever your customer is either it can be a lower uh, cost can be lower or your product uh, performance is better or you give a much better uh, solution always th- think about experience that you are giving uh, to a customer if it is a product based company let's say it is a, some tangible product you always give, bring a experience aspect into your uh, business now if you go online there are many new companies uh, they sell very simple th- stuff like uh, let's say there's one company called ms uh, money and uh, co they are just simply selling uh, uh, coffee uh, filter coffee filter coffee is nothing new to the market but then they are coming out with a very nice theme uh, a story behind their uh, uh, business so when you go with such kind of um, uh, approach surely you will stand out from the crowd uh, so you have to come out with a theme or innovation innovative thinking about uh, on your product so any more questions so i also like to thank uh, balu swami sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity actually if it would it was in person i would have presented on certain slides and it would be even more uh, informative but uh, still uh, sometime uh, we, i hope i can meet all of you all and give you share more valuable insights about my experiences uh, so any more questions you can contact reach out to me through my email any time you uh, you would want thank you sir uh, tamil selvin uh, please uh, can uh, proceed may you wish it's a thank you so much sir for the amazing section now i would like to call shalini to deliver the auto thanks good evening everyone first of all i want to deliver my heartfelt thanks for your valuable time with us sir it has been such a honor to be part of this wonderful event on behalf of ksr educational institution i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our principal dr m kartikeyan sir and cso 
for Dr. S. Balusami sir for arranging such a wonderful section for us. Thank you, sir. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Mr. Vivekanandan sir, for this amazing section. This was really an eye opener one, and I hope this will be help me in my future. Thank you, sir. Sincere thanks to the head of the various department who handled the event throughout. A wide round of applause and thanks to all the participants who made the event a memorable one. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us today and helping us making this event a grand, grand success. Once again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, sir. I hope uh, whenever time permit in the next semester of the examinations. Please, one day you can visit almost uh, KSR education institutions. Uh, 22,750 students are studying under single umbrella. Almost yes, 17 sir. institutions in the same place. Uh, please okay. visit and uh, encourage our uh, team members also. And congratulations sure, to the School of Management Studies, HOD and faculty member for a uh, nice arrangement. And congratulations to the principal and uh, team of uh, KSR KS uh, Women uh, College. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Man. We will meet, sir. We will meet. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Sure, thank sure. Sir. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you. Good thank you, Tamil, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.